but for three uh, say after um, uh, to the middle of 2009 mm. I think if we could adjust our domestic economy policy wise then the external economy should be less relevant mm. uh, we have been relying on export or the external trade uh, ever since uh, 1992, that's, uh, that's Deng Xiaoping's uh, southern tour, and that had been a primarily goal for our entire economy, namely to export, export, export. Mm. And I think at this juncture, we should rethink about that and and to figure out a way and trying to boost our domestic consumption demand. Mm. Another uh, uh, factor that has kicked in is uh, the appreciation of Chinese currency, RMB, because Chinese RMB has been appreciated uh, over the past uh, couple of years. But yes. It seems uh, the, the latter half of this year, we've seen the RMB value devaluated a little mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. So do you think the Chinese government should use the currency tool to uh, boost its export, okay. or is it just fine? The uh, renminbi exchange rate has been quite stable ever since I think August of this year. I said around 6.85 or 6.80. And for a big country like China, mm. it's unlike a small country in the economic textbook, where it can make use effectively use its exchange rate policy, trying to boost its domestic demand. Mm. But for China, we're a big country, so unless we are very confident on how to manage it, my suggestion is just leave it alone. Mm. Of course, making use of the market mechanism, that's always our economists would like to say. Yeah. In this case, yes, for a big country like China, since we are very unlikely to know how the exchange should be managed, so we should be relying more on the market mechanism. So we should leave it alone at this current yeah. stage. Mm -hmm. China's stock market has experienced a roller coaster ride in 2008. The indices have dropped over 60% so far. The loss is even more than the U.S. market, which was at the centerpiece of the economic crisis. Our reporter Guan Xin explains why. The benchmark Shanghai Composite Index hit high of 5,522 in the second trading week of 2008, but then it turned around and started a year-long bear round. The index nosedived to around 3,000 in April and further sank to below 2,000 after the Olympic Games in August. The lowest point of 1,664 was touched in late October. Investors driven in by the rosy gains in 2007 found themselves suffering from big losses. Even institutional investors could not escape the sharp fall. Analysts say the worsening macroeconomic environment is to blame. The subprime crisis started last year and is getting worse. It has a profound negative impact on global financial markets and the real economy. And the recession of the U.S. economy starting from the fourth quarter, as well as the global economic downturn, both have a big impact on our export and economic growth. The change in the economic environment has affected investors' state of mind and companies' performance. The stock markets are thus impacted. The securities regulator has tried its best to stabilize the market and restore confidence of investors. However, experts say it will still take some time before we see the market stabilize and recover. Well, Professor Hall, China is hardly alone in experiencing turmoil in its equity markets, but China's stock markets fell the hardest. Well, although China has been enjoying a still 9% economic growth, what is the reason behind such a sharp drop? If you mention, if we think about the, this, uh, the, the October peak of 2007, yes, we are pretty bad. But if we think about 2005 or 2006, most of 2006, the stock index was about 2,000 years. And so look at those two years. Those two years were performing excellently. So you mean that the stock market has really reflected the real economy performance? <laughs> in China, the stock market, whether it is in fact reflecting the real economy, I doubt it simply because our stock market has been very, very incomplete. Mm. In a sense, it uh, has too many um, uh, noises. And so the best way to deal with the stock market is trying to build up a healthy, less noisy uh, stock market. Mm. So there are many people saying that uh, it's 
about investment sentiment, about mechanism, there has been expectations of uh, other uh, facilities, uh, investment facilities, such as margin trade, such as uh, index futures, or as the growth board uh, uh, enterprises. Do you think these can be substantiated in the short term? How will they help China stock markets? Well, I think all the, the things you mentioned, they are a healthy aspect of the stock market. So by all means, it should be pushed forward faster, as fast as it could. But unfortunately, I think during the past or a uh, couple of years of uh, researching in the stock market, that the uh, uh, somehow our government authorities are reluctant to do all that, put it out in a very uh, uh, promising ways. And, and my perspective, I, I think they should be pushed forward. So, so it will be picking up in 2009 or not? I would expect that the stock market will not be falling too much, but whether it will be picking up and to what extent, I don't want to make a prediction on it. Okay. And the links between China's markets and global markets are becoming more obvious. And this is just a part of the bigger picture of a more close links between China's economy and the world economy. So how do you think China will play its role in the general world picture? We're all learning, especially for China. China has been on a transition economy, and all of a sudden, the world is looking at China to see how it respond. Mm. So, I would say China should be more responsible for the rest of the world. In a sense, it's leading the rest of the world mm. probably in the next mm. uh, year or two, and it's probably going to affect the rest of the world in a unexpected way. So it's trying to lead and also stabilize the rest of the world. Mm. That's also for the Chinese officials to learn. Mm. So as long as we can adjust ourselves in terms of domestic demand, picking up all our uh, loose, loose parts, mm. I, shouldn't, I shouldn't see any problems. Okay, we must be optimistic about the economy's growth because we have tools and we have the courage to move on. Thanks Professor Hall. Thank you. And with that, we come to the end of the first part of our year-end special program. And tomorrow, we'll take an in-depth look at the proactive measures China has been taking to revitalize the economy in the year 2008. Be sure to tune in. Thank you. Well.